Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We begin by fixing a few things that I had wrong in the previous video. First of all, Roro pointed out that I should disable the city lights for JNSQ because they might conflict with parallax. And in fact I had done that with stock visual enhancements but I had forgotten that JNSQ might have city lights. So let's just remove those and hopefully that will fix some of the artifacting that we saw in the previous episode. So thank you for that comment. And then Danny Morales said that we need to fix a few settings as far as the antenna range is concerned. And so our range modifier uh, needs to be at 1 and the DSN needs to be at 4. Apparently according to the wiki for... I can't hit 1, can I? Um, nope, 1.01 it'll have to be. Uh, according to wiki for JNSQ, so we'll get, I'll give myself a bonus, darn it. Um, if, uh, I can't hit, oh, I'll take that, that's fine. Okay, so accept that, and then we can take a look at our probe and see if we need to extend antenna on it. I didn't realize that that might be a thing, and, um, of course, I've made satellites that require the antennas to be extended, and I'm familiar with that with other things, but didn't even think about that with regard to this one, so let's see if that is something that'll help us transmit the science. Mm, extend. So, it needed to extend the antennae. Now, is it going to transmit the science? Let's see. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I think it did. Okay. Well, since we have the ability to transmit science, let's turn, make sure we're recharging. And it's pointed out that this might not be able to maintain its charge on the nighttime side. We'll see. We will test that. How about that? So, gravity scan. Oh, let's stop the gravity scan. Let's just continue the telemetry report since it won't take too long. Okay, we got credits for those. I don't, I don't need to rush this, potentially, but let's run the gravity scan and see how severe the charge reduction is. We can't even really maintain charge right now. And since the gravity scan is going to take 45 days, it's going to be a while. Shutting down non-essential systems. Well, it should have shut down the gravity scan, though, if it's going to shut down non-essential systems. But Okay, now it's recharging. However... This doesn't have enough power to do the gravity scan at the same time, even when we're on the daylight side. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have to get a better probe to do a gravity scan, 45 days. But we could probably keep the telemetry report running, and maybe as we pass other biomes... I don't know, I think the telemetry report is just gotta be in space low? Is this, is this the low around? this Kerbin, or is it high? Flying low, flying high. We haven't completed. I think it means that we've got 30% complete and we've got all that complete. So we actually have not completed in space low, I think is what this is trying to say. So, you know what? Uh, should we just deorbit this? No, we'll just leave it as a, as a comm set. Let's just... Let's just not have the telemetry report. It's not going to go over another biome. So, okay. So it's done some useful work. And we've got some science. Let's go to the R&D building. And my goal this time is going to be to send a probe to the moon. Okay, engineering. We will... Well, that's a lot of things. Thermometer, Geiger counter. Okay, in fact, that, that probe or commsat might actually have other experiments. Or maybe we have to load them in at the start, though. Probably it doesn't have them just on the fly like that. Okay, and survivability is important to us. I hope that maybe we could get some really tiny parachutes for our really expensive probes, but... All right, we've got survivability. So, let's see. Contracts? We have none active. Science Day from Space Around Kerbin. Now... We have to keep in mind that we don't have the tracking station upgrade or the flight planning, so right now we can't plot maneuver nodes. 
which might be fine. <laughs> so, uh, Science Day from Space Around Kerbin. Um, let's just pick it up and see if we can get some additional science from that probe. I don't know. Do we have to get all the gravity scanning done for it to count? As having transmitted science from Space Around Kerbin? I guess so. I think that's going to be how it is. So, we'll have to package that with something else. Um, satellites. I mean, I would like something to go to the moon with. Photo reconnaissance from polar orbit. Well, Blue Dog has a few good things here. But, let's see about the satellite. Keo synchronous orbit of Kerbin. Mystery Goo. And this is a weird synchronous orbit. Uh, I mean, normally synchronous orbits are circular. But, okay, it's like whatever they want. Alright, let's try that, and that'll probably require something that will be conducive to going to the moon as well. If we're going to make a fine-tuned orbit, we're probably going to want a liquid stage up here instead of the solid. Do we have a nice, efficient liquid engine that can go here now? That's a solid fuel return capsule retro pack. Very efficient. It's amazing how efficient the uh, solid motors are with Blue Dog and all this business um, early on. Inline engine. Liquid fuel and oxidizer. 250 sea level, 290 vacuum, 4 kilonewtons. It's a little bit more powerful than I want, but that's sure very efficient. Small vernier engines. D uh, now. What kind of rated ignition 65 and high quality rated ignitions 117? So no problem there. The gimbling is a little bit weird though. It's limited by axis. There's this Alpha Star one. Wait, how how expensive is that? 165. This one 8.5 kilonewtons. These the problem is that we're gonna have to put them in pairs probably. So that doubles the thrust and doubles the cost as well. This one is double the thrust of the other one. Not as efficient. Certainly not as efficient at sea level. And 155 only though. Much fewer ignitions. Interesting thing, uh, uh, Vernier engines, at least uh, when we're talking about the launch stage engines, they only really light once. So they probably don't need 65 rated ignitions. But um, yeah, this is really good ISP, isn't it? I don't think I have an engine that's more efficient than those verniers. Oh wait, no, uh, there's a solid rocket motor, but again, we're excluding the solid rocket motors for this purpose. Yeah, the solid rocket motors get 294. Alright, well, let's try this as an experimental sort of thing. So we need the problem is we need a fuel tank that's small. I think this is the smallest fuel tank we've got actually. Which is sort of sad. And let's just have no dome at the bottom. Or uh yep. It's probably for the best. I mean technically we should probably have four of those. Oh did the dome actually change uh, the dome actually has fuel in it. Dome actually has fuel in. Oh, we'll keep the dome then. Why not? Now there's no bottom mounting point though. Um, that won't. Hmm. See, uh, the bottom node will have these engines clipping into that base, and that's going to be a problem. So we need some sort of structure here, and I can't tweak scale a girder segment. <laughs> so that's no good. Satellite truss. Well, it's an interesting idea. Okay, I mean... Well, it, it'll work, I think. It's not, it is a decoupler. I don't want it to decouple, actually. Or maybe I do. Will this actually work to decouple our payload? I don't know. It's not reading the delta V of our payload, so that's worrisome. 
We'll give it a shot. I'm curious about this this little brace that we have here. 0.035. It's specifically for the Mocha relay satellite. Definitely has a decoupler, even though it's not under coupling. But again, we have a problem that we have to have some sort of trust there otherwise, but there might be another easier solution. Okay, well, we'll see whether this can do it. And we need to put some more solar panel re so that it can do a full gravity scan, maybe. And maybe we should change the instruments. Maybe the thermometer and barometer or something. Uh, telemetry report, hot. Okay, uh, yes. Uh, can we change the gravity scan? It seems like the gravity scan is like permanent. Yeah, I guess the gravity scan is just automatic and we can't change that one. Oh well. I mean, we could just put extra instruments on. There's this film camera and then the mystery goo. Oh, we needed the mystery goo, didn't we? Why do we even want a mystery goo on a satellite like this when we're not going to be able to recover it? Okay, that probably hurt our Delta V though. Well, it's 2,700 instead of 3,200, but that's still not too bad. Okay, so this is just Gamma 2. And we are going to try to get it to geosynchronous orbit. Or what they call geosynchronous orbit. Okay, for now, no weirdness around here. Oh no, there's that, there's that shadow, uh, shadow of an iceberg. Do you see that? That's still a thing, for some reason. Oh well. <laughs> um, figure that one out, folks. SAS on, throttle up, and... It was a 4 degree inclination. Where are we? We're at the equator, so that's no problem. And it's, you know, going prograde, so... And launch! Okay, everything started out here. Oh no, the shadow's coming with us. That's now the logo of this entire series. The the iceberg shadow. Or ice flow shadow. That's just how it is. Gamma batteries recharged. Very good. Hopefully it can provide some communication support at some point. Okay, separation, ignition, and fairings. Very nice. Fairings did a good job this time. Well, there's an extra heavy payload, so it's probably going to take some of the payload to make orbit. Now, we can quickly do a temperature scan, maybe. Well, I don't think we'll stay at this point in the atmosphere for two minutes, though. Maybe if we flatten out a bit. It's forcing it, but... I really don't want to go to the moon until they give us a contract for it, but uh, I also want to make sure we do that in this video, or at least try to go to the moon in this video, so in a pinch we'll just try. I think my insistence on doing a temperature scan might have been a bad idea. Oh, wait, what is it doing? Oh no you don't. Hold on. Ah, <laughs> uh, it didn't separate. Well, what, what is the decoupling thing for on this? Well, okay. So that's the problem. So this this thing doesn't seem to want to decouple the way I thought it would. Well, I guess we're using this engine to try and make orbit then. We got that temperature scan. Okay, let's extend antennae so it can transmit. We just got into space. I think we got the previous... No, maybe we didn't. I don't know. Okay, there we go. We got the flying high one. Oh, speaking of flying high, we're a little bit too high. Let's uh, round it out at apoapsis. Got the antennae out. Uh, we'll wait a little bit before doing the mystery goo. I want to finish up the temperature scan and... Yeah, I think that was it. Okay. Now we can do the mystery goo. Okay, Mystery Goo's running, needs 10 minutes. 
That should have gotten us the signs from in space. Yeah, we've got that contract done. We've still apparently got some city lights. I don't know how this all works. Um, okay, uh, it's done. It just needs to transmit. I was hoping to test whether it could communicate through gamma there. Um, I think that's what this weak signal is. Yeah, I think it's communicating through gamma. So that works as a relay satellite right there. Do we have to transfer it over here? Transfer data here? No. I don't know. Did we actually transmit that or not? Okay, this, this menu is a little bit weird. It doesn't say completed. Maybe we just have to bring it back. I don't know. I guess, I mean, either we can't transmit that at all and we just have to bring it back or I'm missing something. But anyway, I think we're done with this one. So, all right, we just need to change out that decoupler because this one doesn't decouple the way we need it to decouple. So we probably need some structural part and then a decoupler. Structural ring from derp. Well, let's see how big it is. Oh, just about the right size, sort of. Then again, if it works, it works. Let's see, this one? Ah, that looks better. It doesn't do too bad on the Delta V, about the same as the other structural element. Okay, now we're reading different stats because we uh, we are no longer cross-feeding through. Uh, it was reading stats based on cross-feeding this tank into here before. Oh, no surface mounting on these engines. We don't have little cubic octags or anything like that. And we don't have the engine plate, I think. Okay, so mounting two engines to the same thing is probably not so easy. We can put more fuel on the core here, though. Well, maybe it's time to unlock the larger RL-79 instead of LR-79. That's more efficient. That's the full Vanguard stats right there for sea level and vacuum ISP, and I think that's basically the thrust. So, but it's 1.25 tons, but it might even save us the SRBs. It's huge though. It looks good. It's huge. That's still not enough Delta V to satisfy me though. Ah, uh, we're over mass with four of these. Keeping in mind that these are permanently attached. 7,345, well, they give us an extra 300 or so, and the extra thrust weight ratio initially, so I guess they're worth it. Well, we'll try this as Gamma 3. Uh, if we can't quite make it, we'll have to consider a smaller probe core. I'm gonna change out the instrument this time. Let's go for... Geiger counter. Well, our unofficial, unavoidable logo is present, and we will... I, I don't think there's any reason to like line up with a particular node of the orbit. Just sort of launch a little bit more like this. I'll have to turn off the battery warnings for everything. Okay, SAS on, throttle up, and go. No, oh, not that way. Okay, boosters are out. Oh, we can use the RCS on them though. I really need to pack less of that mar propellant though. Well, we still got the artifacting, folks. I don't know, uh... uh I tried to turn off the city lights, but we saw city lights. Maybe I should just go into the folder and delete the bloody city lights. I think that might be a little bit more decisive. Maybe I didn't save it properly or something. Okay, that's good. And fairings. 
We should try and deorbit this stage. So we'll get close to orbit with it, but not quite there. Well, we're in space, I can extend the antennae. And we're in space, so I can start the radiation scan. Well, communication help won't be around for a while. We do have this, oh, we do have Gamma 2 back there. I hope it actually has electric charge right now. It could help. I don't know if anybody knows of anything to spruce up the Space Center area in JNSQ as far as buildings and such is concerned. In stock, uh, with Kerbal Constructs, we have uh, Kerbinside and uh, KSC++ and stuff like that. But I don't know if there's anything... I don't think those... Oh, well, it's gonna deorbit anyway. Okay. Oh, those have a fun sound. Uh, anyway, um... I don't know if this, those are compatible with JNSQ or whether there's some JNSQ equivalent for that stuff. But our space center is rather barren. I can start putting stuff with Kerbal Constructs. But if there's stuff that's very already available, that'd be nice. It's just looking a little bit deserted. And that's Orbit. Okay, we'll take that for now. Alright, so... Apoapsis. I mean, if we got a correct inclination, we're gonna do it at Apoapsis anyway, or close to it, right over there. So, um... We might as well uh, go around and on this side next time boost up. Well, we could just do it now, but it'll be a little bit off. I don't know how accurate it needs us to be. We might as well just try and do it accurately. It looks like the radiation experiment doesn't require that much electric charge. Well, that's complicated. Okay, okay, stop that. That's interesting. That's an interesting effect you've got there. Oh, now we've got charged back. We got the radiation scan done. Let's just turn that off for sure. We'll probably be able to get a high orbit one. Oh, I passed it a little bit, but... Okay, prograde. SAS on. Ignition. These are the most efficient liquid engines we've got, folks. <laughs> they got a lot of ignitions, too, really. We should just use all these all the time. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the JNSQC lights config. And see if that helps. Our apoapsis is sort of forming at our ascending node there rather than where we want it to be. But it's probably not too bad. Ah, uh, infinite throttling. Okay. All right, that should do. Let's get up there. Okay, we need to get rid of all those warnings. Uh, let's see. Data failures lock config. Okay, well. Messages. Supply, battery. Component failure, we'll all get that. That'll be interesting. Okay. I'll just do the burn at the ascending node, or close to it. Let's let's do it here. So we want to go a little bit south of prograde and target periapsis seven thousand two hundred. The communication ranges are fine. Okay. I guess we have to hold still for ten seconds. Yep. Okay, got everything else though. And we're good. That one is fulfilled. I think this should be able to get to the moon too. I mean, uh, considering we have to circularize and everything. We'll see. So we'll try and send one out to the moon with different instruments though. Uh, let's. I don't think there's any point doing the mystery goo. We had to put a mystery goo on because it required it, but really... It isn't a different radiation scan? I thought we would have a different situation here. Oh, well it's got a magnetosphere, inner belt, outer belt, global, and solar storm. Okay, so it's sort of a different thing. It's not in space low, in space high or something. 
we've been in the magnetosphere the whole way, I suppose. I don't know where the inner belt and outer belt would be if it's all magnetosphere. Hmm. Okay, if you say so. All right then, so this one's done. And the gravity scan. I mean, it should get pretty good power up here. Right, let's put it uh, this way around. It's not going to be blocked by Kerbin for very long, but then again, it's probably still going to lose. Well, anyway, we'll let the gravity scan happen and see what happens. If we suddenly get some science, it'll be nice, but we really should have put some more solar panels on here. Okay, uh, I don't, is there any way it could possibly finish it though? No, I guess not. Yeah, I don't think there's any way it could possibly finish it. We'll let it be. Okay, back to Space Center. I mean, as far as our plotting is concerned, we only have 300,000 and the uh, mission control would be 150,000 and the tracking station is 300,000, so it's not like we have a whole lot of spare here. Yeah, they're not giving us a moon mission, but I'm gonna go ahead and try and send one of those things to the moon. It's not really good to have the gravity scan if we can't really do the gravity scan. Maybe we should try a different one. Oh, that's that's a Pioneer probe right there. But that's super expensive. What am I getting with that kind of cost, anyway? It's got a little engine, though. But it's solid. It's got resource scanners on. I guess we have to worry about the antenna range. Yeah, this this one's relay antenna should cover it. 73,000 kilometers. Let me just double check. Ah, oh, moon is at 88,000 kilometers. Okay, well, that might be uh so that relay antenna on our existing satellite is not good enough. Oh, well, this lofty one can handle it, but it's not got to be a relay. Pioneer. That's another Pioneer probe. But this Pioneer probe as well, with the existing DSN, cannot communicate from the moon. Yeah, basically, if you want any of these fancy ones down here, this lofty one's our only bet with the kind of range that we need. On the bright side, it's lighter than what we've got. We don't need the goo anymore. I don't remember which one this was, or why they think it ought to have so much range, but... This only has a telemetry report. I guess that'll be good enough for now. Not a whole lot of electric charge. Well, battery of a solar panel sure is convenient. Let's just put it on the side here. Okay, I think we will call that our first attempt at a moon mission. And we'll see how it goes. Ah, sure, Delta. <laughs> well, upgrade to Delta, even though it's a gamma rocket, basically. Uh, I don't know what the rules are, but it's Delta now. We're basically at the pad limit. We're only a little bit shy of 18 tons. The moon is still equatorial. No tricks. Okay, so now we've got a commsat there, commsat there, looks good. A little bit dark, but we'll get into daylight soon enough. Okay, throttle up, now say a song, and launch! Someday it's gonna catch me by surprise and one of the SRBs are not gonna light. <laughs> I think they must have failures too, right? I'm not sure. There's a reliability thing, but that's that seems to be on the RCS maybe? Seeing of which, let's just turn that on right now. Reliability, RCS and engine, okay. So yeah, it's theoretically possible for us to have just one SRB light. Okay. 
and pairings. Looking good. Okay, separation, ignition. Funny sound with these, but if they work, they work. I could theoretically flip this ring around and get rid of it, but I would be worried because it's clipping into these. It's probably safer this way. Okay, lopsided, but alright. We've got like 3,000 meters per second left. That should be enough to even get into orbit around the moon. But since this isn't a relay satellite, it's not pressing to do that. Um, we should be able to transfer right now if my eyeballing it is not deceiving me. Uh, does the moon rising above the surface trick work around here? I don't know. I mean, we can adjust later if necessary. It's not like we have very limited ignitions. We have limited ignitions, theoretically, but they're limited to whatever it is, 60-something, so we're okay. We'll try and boost up here and see if we hit the moon. Okay, and check comms. Uh, comms look good, especially with the Gamma 3 up there. Ignition. Well, what do we have? Telemetry. Well, let's do the low carbon orbit telemetry here. We never actually finished that. Okay, it is transmitting. And our orbit's getting up there. Will we hit a moon? I didn't calculate the phase angle or anything like that, so it's just a random thing. We won't even see an encounter, really. We'll just adjust. We've got the Delta V. Can't set it as a target. Go a little bit past like that. Okay. Alright, let's see. We got the telemetry from low carbon orbit. Okay, we are slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. Do we slow down enough is the question. And... Come on, moon. Come on, moon. Grab us. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, it's paused. Oh, we, we, we got moon. And we actually uh, transmitted the moon space high. Okay, so yeah, it's gonna cost a lot to capture around it, but we'll try to capture around it. This looks like our periapsis over here. And ignition. Periapsis going down nicely. Uh, let's hold on there. I don't want to crash into the moon. That's probably low enough. I don't know what constitutes low though. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. Let's see if we can get some low telemetry here. Well, that's what the moon looks like in JNSQ. Low is under 200 kilometers, it seems. And transmitting. Carbon's back there. Okay, we got those credits. So. Uh, perfect moon mission for our first try. We've got some science and I'll leave it here for this episode. Next time we are going to, I think, try to launch some crew or do Minmus. But I think we've got the contracts for crews, so we will try and launch crew. Maybe before launching crew we'll do a test little probe to see if we can recover stuff from Kerbin orbit. Yeah, that seems prudent. And then we'll proceed with crew, I think. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.